Hello, I am so pleased to welcome you all to Books Noted Live, a new series presented by the Academy of American Poets, which features two poets with new or forthcoming books. This virtual event is made possible in part by the New York State Council for the Arts and the New York City Department of Cultural Affairs. Our virtual events this fall winter season are kept free thanks to generous contributions by you, our audience members. If you're able to make a contribution, please click on the button below or visit poets.org and learn more about becoming a member. My name is Nikai Paredes, and I'm the Senior Programs Manager at the Academy of American Poets. For those of you who don't know us, we are the nation's leading champion of poets, poetry, and poetry organizations. We also produce poets.org, originated National Poetry Month, which is celebrated every April, and publish the popular Poem A Day series, among many other free programs and online resources. Before I introduce the two poets who will be reading and in conversation this evening, I'd like to acknowledge that I'm joining this virtual event from Queens, New York, which is the traditional lands of the Munsi Lenape and Canarsie people who have stewarded this land throughout the generations. I'd also like to provide a description of my video feed. I'm a brown woman of Filipino descent in her early 30s with medium length dark hair. Behind me is a section of a painting with green and brown brush strokes. Finally, I would love to remind everyone to be respectful of your fellow audience members and of our poets in the chat. Thank you so much for your cooperation. This evening, I am thrilled and honored to introduce the poets Taylor Johnson and Yona Harvey. Taylor Johnson is the author of Inheritance, which is forthcoming in November from Alice James Books. Taylor received fellowships and scholarships from Kalalu, Kavaykanem, Lambda Literary, Tin House, the Vermont Studio Center, Yado, the Conversation Literary Festival, the Bread Loaf Writers Conference, and the Bread Loaf Environmental Writers Conference. In 2017, Taylor received the Larry Neal Writers Award from the DC Commission on the Arts and Humanities. Taylor lives and listens in Southern Louisiana. Our second poet this evening is Yona Harvey. Yona's newest collection from Four Way Books is titled, You Don't Have to Go to Mars for Love. Harvey is also the author of Hemming the Water, also from Four Way Books which received the Kate Tufts Discovery Award. She contributed to Marvel's World of Wakanda and co-authored with Tana Hisi Coates, Black Panther and the Crew. She won the inaugural Lucille Clifton Legacy Award at Poetry from St. Mary's College of Maryland and the Carol R. Brown Achievement Award from the Heinz Foundation. She is currently an assistant professor at the University of Pittsburgh and serves on the editorial board of Poetry Daily. Taylor, the floor is yours. Um, unmute Taylor. Can you hear me? Okay, I think we're good now. This is Inheritance, I'm just gonna read a few poems. Thank you for being here and listening. Since I quit that internet service, I'm thinking more about the transitive properties in books, the words, the palimpsest of images accruing in my brain, but more immediately, the book in my hand the cover worn at one end from sweat and gripping it when it comes close, close as in when I stood up, let one deep exhale when I came to the lines of all fearless happiness from which reaches my life I sing and find it underlined by a beloved stranger. It's like turning the record over, knowing you're hearing what I'm hearing easing up on the edge of the chair it's like we're holding hands now at the edge of a white silence from which we are to make a music of our being here of being moved wherein our music complements and holds close each other's sound sound in the wet room of the tree i met you in 
Nothing is said about the water or the fearless trees angled toward and against the light. Light that did fall on me, made much of me. Light that sings through me, so I'm singing. I forget about money watching the clouds over Eighth and Ingraham. The clouds, a rhubarb colored ship in the sky. To my right, it all grays out. The bats emerging now from the chimneys. The bats listening for the cicadas echo. Echo is a way to create space, is a metaphor for time. Time for the cop to move along. I think watching the cop watch me from my porch. Fuck 12, the robin on the wire vine, the wire eye competing with the bats for cicadas, the robin competing reds with the sky, the sky a money for the cicadas, a way to make space, time, the cicadas sounding out the future through repetition. A friend says to spend nothing is to keep flexibility in your hands, to keep your youth, money, the sound of decay, money, the repetition of waste. West 177th and Broadway. All night you eyed the man I wanted to be. My jaw flexed tight. Anger slipped into desire. Easily he would rise. Easily you would disperse pleasure made into light. What you want under him, I put on to amuse. I, your worked supplicant. Yes, love is looking away. My desire greened in your dismissal was technicolor and twilight made and never turning off. The city air hung humid above our charade. What need I could fill to transubstantiate, to unravel. I'll just read one more. Thank you for listening where you are right now. Art movie. Red is a secret in the trees. The train passes through the trees in Alabama. Red earth, red earth. The winter light consumes the field. The field silvers. The light relieves. The light grown as dust upon the field. I put my ear in. I crack an egg and a saxophone that tells on me, yells at me, comes out, no yoke. The train hollers to stop. The train stopped, still loads new passengers, but the conductor won't let me get off and kiss you. You know that's what I haunted to do. The stage is the window circle between us, the emergency exit door. I keep you in my ear and give you how I'm doing and what I want to eat were I not on a train. You and your white boots. You tell me what else could come out of an egg, women all the way down, holding waist. The train is a place going by, strictly passing through. I touch a stranger's wrist going back to my seat. The whole train becomes a garment I put on. I touch indiscriminately. I can't say, I can't stay, I tell the dog, waving from your convertible. None of the windows open. I held your gaze until I couldn't. In the previous scene, I took you to the slip until we were shining tunnels for sound. I took your sound for my name. Never asked what I called myself. Thank you. That was incredible. <laughs> I want to thank whoever paired me with Taylor for this reading. <laughs> um, and thank you all for being here on a Friday evening. I'm going to read from You Don't Have to Go to Mars for Love. Sonnet for a tall flower blooming at dinner time. Southern flower, 
I want to quote the bard, to serenade you, to raise a glass to you. Long and tall, you are always parched and hungry. You wobble in strong winds. You puff your bright hair when it rains. You toss off the lint of dandelions. You lean into the evening haunts with your indifferent afro. You were born in the old world city, the invisible dark girl city, the city that couldn't hold a candle, a straight pin, a slave owner's sins to you. You are the most beautiful dark that hosts the most private sorrows and feeds the hungriest ghosts. The Sonnet District. Uh, I guess two takes on the a same, on a similar form, on the same form. The Sonnet District. Stay woke, my ex whispered, easing into boxer shorts and skittering from bed sheets to back door, steeple chasing the furniture in less than 60 seconds. Turns out he'd been working for the Federal Bureau of Invisible Women, and his real name wasn't Tyrone, which I should have known because when was the last time I'd met a Tyrone in the black hole atmosphere of post and ish? Turns out I'd been sonambulating most of my adult life with nary a hint of productive suspiciousness. Turns out I'd been wooed by the red wine rhythms of inebriated verse scrawled on napkins and slipped across the close quartered dinner tables of out of the way restaurants. This I'd confessed to a rapt audience of new polygamists and wayward nuns at the Center for Alternative Shakespeareans and on again, off again, schizophrenics. How could I explain? I was filled with super celestial longing and addiction to touch. Just the brush of my ex's arm against mine reduced me to speechlessness. To say nothing of his dark ties and fine tailored suits falling to the floor of my bedroom. Things got out of hand when I couldn't leave him without saying goodbye 14 times. The stereo specific sparkle of my manicure holding his chin steady beneath his closed eyes. How could I have known the FBIW had amended its founding policies and taken to hiring men? How could I have known the slippery slope of sentimentality would land me in a leather straitjacket and kitten heels smashing discarded cigarettes into interrogation room tile? That string of strangulations in the chauvinist district, my audience leaned in closer than, I can't call it, but you best believe there's a spiritualizing pattern coming into alignment. The dazzling intuition of my female species systematically undermined for the sake of a male leader. Of course, I stole my files to burn later. The guards were distracted by the swing of their own voices, all mistress's eyes and sun. You best believe I peeped the conveniently placed escape hatch in the shape of a narrow couplet from where I sat. It didn't take a telescope to find that. And 
Uh, the last poem I'll read is called The Dream, Just, the Dream District, January. January, I'm lost inside your industrial gray. My rig at the ready, my truck trucking, it's ginormous tires, flat ironing the road. Vivica Fox's mantra on the CB radio, black mambo, black mambo. More white static and fade, no word from the ladies out there. They know and don't know. They say and don't say. Don't say January. I'm driving past your peculiar highway sign painted Pasadena. January, you know I'm nowhere near. Pennsylvania's no California and getting lost exhausts me. January, I pull the air horn on your fog, pull over at a coffee house that looks like a house I know, but where are the woods, the village, and the goddamn snow? All my guilt and shame on the mount of books and poems I ought to know. Now, honey, read this, the Tina Turner lookalike owner says, hands me her copy of an anti-fracking manifesto derived from ancient tea brewing rituals. And by the way, that's all we serve. No coffee at this coffee house. Our specialty is green, Tina says, grown local by the community. All those T's and E's should put me at ease, but my bearings are lost. Where am I? Pasadena, Pennsylvania? Well, make it black and steep it long, I say. The day is wearing down on me. Thanks. That was wonderful, Yona. Thank you. <laughs> That's a lot. That means a lot coming from you. <laughs> it is true. Like whoever paired us together, that's a good mind, you know. <laughs> I'm appreciating whoever made that decision. Yes. Mm -hmm. <gasps> Woo. Congratulations on your book. Thank it's, you. It's incredible. I got a sneak peek at it. They sent me the uh, galley, I guess. So yeah, it's really, it's beautiful. Um, can I can I ask the first question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. So, you know, your poems have this incredible intimacy to them, but at the same time, there's this awareness of place. You know, there's like this incredible rendering of a public space but there's always like, or often, this interaction between two characters in that space that seems private. You know, they're looking at each other or saying things or understanding things that people in the space might not totally understand. So could you talk a little bit maybe about how place influences your work, maybe DC or New yeah. Orleans? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then also how, I don't know, how you deal with intimacy in your work. Oh, man. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a big deal. Um, but place, yeah, I, um, most of these poems I wrote, I wrote walking, I wrote uh, in my head walking, you know what I mean? So they are very much influenced by uh, the listening in my feet, you know what I mean? And, and my taking in of my surroundings, which is mostly DC, um, sometimes Paris, sometimes New Orleans, sometimes New York, but um, mostly DC and, and I feel like a lot of the, I don't know, growing up in a place you 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 get used to the sounds and the smells and the, the sights of that place. And I think internalizing all those things, I had something to say back to that landscape, you know what I mean? Yes. Um, and a lot of these conversations that I had that are present in the book and like present in my head all the time are often with strangers. Um, and I think that's like a beautiful thing about cities, you know what I mean? To have this moment of intimacy with a stranger really briefly. Um, and then to invite people in in the form of a poem, you know what I mean? I get to share that intimacy with, with you now, you know what I mean? Um, yes. Yeah. 
So for me, I mean, I- intimacy, I think is, that's a, that's a Rubik's cube, but um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. I feel like, I don't know, there's a, mm, this gesture that you make sometimes in the poems, like, did you see how I did that? Or, you know, you, you sort of pierce the surface of a poem and let mm-hmm. people know oh, I'm aware that this poem is being read. I don't know yeah. how that starts in the beginning for you. That might come later, like when yeah. you're advising. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, <laughs> I, I feel like that, that's, a, it's a, that's an interesting thing to point out. Because for me, it's like uh, when I'm writing a poem or when I'm thinking about um, constructing anything with art, really, there's like always a polyvocality happening. You know what I mean? So... I can see myself and I can also see myself as a a member of a situation and see myself as looking at a situation, you know what I mean? And a lot of that, that kind of awareness comes from the music that I listened to uh, growing up in Houston, which is go-go music, which is like a very polyvocal surround sound, you know what I mean? So a lot of what I'm trying to capture is this, uh, I guess, go-go aesthetic through the poetry, which is, it's terribly difficult to do. And I don't know if I achieve that all the time. And I don't even Mm -hmm. know if it's like, coming across anybody who is outside of that that knowledge, you know what I mean? Okay. Um, but that's that's what I'm going for most of the okay. time. Yeah. 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 It's, yeah, it's a lot of listening. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's very sound conscious. Like um to me it's almost like sound is like a living entity. It's another <laughs> being yeah. in it the is. work. So. It is. That's how yeah. I approach it in the world too, you know. Like yeah. Outside, outside of that space, it's it's alive, and you know that vibration carries a lot, carries yeah. a lot of energy. And poems are good in that way, you know what I mean? Like for this, uh, what past twenty minutes now, we've all been how many people have been under the vibration of our our thoughts and our energy, you know what I mean? And that's pretty yeah. powerful. Yeah. Yeah. Can I ask you a question? Sure. <laughs> okay. Cool. Um. I wonder as somebody, you know, this is my first book, but you, this is your second book now. And I wonder about um, your voice, your progression of your voice or the change in your voice between, between your collections, Seven in the Water, and then, you know, mm-hmm. I put Mars for Love and how you got back into uh, the space to even write poems that, that moved into this book. You know what I mean? I feel like I'm at this place now where I'm relearning what a poem is, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and I just I, I wonder about, you know, how you how you moved from him in the water, which was, you know, Mary Lou Williams really stood out in that way. And then in this one, there's like this fantastical black woman who goes through all these dimensions, you know what I mean? And mm-hmm. explores intimacy in certain ways as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I just wonder I wonder about your voice. Yeah. I think I can't really say that I'm that conscious of it, of the change, mostly because. I feel like it gets, these books get written over long stretches of time. You know what I mean? And not necessarily, I used to say that I was a slow writer. And I think that's only partially true now. I just think there's always things going on in my life. And so I think for the second book, just different circumstances, um, older children, different job different relationships, not married anymore. You know, I think mm-hmm. all of those things impact the way that, impacted the way that the poem sounded, mm-hmm. you know? But I, I can't say that it was some, one specific thing or one choice between books. It's just like, oh, suddenly I'm just not the same woman or writer that I was for the first book that I am now. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. yeah, I think also I, I might have been having a lot more fun mm-hmm. writing the second book. Mm-hmm. I can see that. Yeah. <laughs> Even though I was way more stressed out, ironically, <laughs> like I was. Yeah. But yeah, I think I just learned to relax and not. I, enough was going on in real life that <laughs> real life that I could just sort of be freer and do what I wanted even more, push the limits of that even more in the second book. 
do you feel like some of that freedom came from your writing these graphic novels? Like, did the the sense of play kind of come into the poems in that way? Yeah, that's so funny. Somebody, someone else asked me that too. Yes, yeah. that's yeah. a great question. Yeah, yeah. I just think you get exposed to, at least I did, a different audience, mm-hmm. and they are. I don't know, just more relaxed. It's just a slightly different audience than the poetry audience. And I feel like they taught me a lot just to be around geeks and people who dress up in costumes, cosplay. It's just, I I definitely think that rubbed off on me Mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah. 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 So do you feel like, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead, go ahead. I just wanted to know if it goes both ways, you know what I mean? Like, does the poetry come into the uh, space of play within the graphic novels in any way that's like, oh. Discern-